Ugandan police have warned opposition leaders that Somali-based Al-Shabaab terrorists may try to assassinate them. Opposition leaders responded that they're being terrorized by Ugandan President Yoweri Museveni himself. And international observers and journalists pointed out that Al-Shabaab's most logical target is also President Museveni. KPFA's Ann Garrison has more. Last week, Ugandan authorities arrested four organizers of the country's ongoing protests against soaring food and fuel prices and charged them with terrorism, for which they could hang. This week, Ugandan police boss Major General Kale Kayahura warned Ugandan opposition leaders that Somali-based Al-Shabaab terrorists were in the country to assassinate prominent political leaders, meaning most of all them. Alara Otunu, Ugandan People's Congress leader and former UN Undersecretary and Special Representative for Children in Armed Conflict, responded that the opposition is indeed concerned about terror because they're being terrorized by Ugandan President Yori Museveni and Major General Kayahura. We cannot discuss Al-Shabaab when we have terror here, Mr. Otunu said. American human rights activist and Black Star News contributor Michael Kirkpatrick, who has traveled back and forth to Uganda since 1998, says it's ludicrous for Major General Kayahura to warn opposition leaders that Al-Shabaab terrorists might assassinate them after his own police force have repeatedly arrested and brutalized them during the past six weeks. The threat of Al-Shabaab to the opposition leaders in Uganda is preposterous. The real danger for the people of Uganda is from its own government and military. Recent peaceful demonstrations resulted in the deaths of at least 10 Ugandans, including a two-year-old baby girl, hundreds of injuries, and the arrests of over a 1,000 people. Many of those arrested are still incarcerated without even being charged with a crime. Some observers have suggested that this could be an excuse for tailing and intimidating all the opposition leaders even more closely, maybe even assassinating them and then saying Al-Shabaab did it. Is that credible? By mentioning Al-Shabaab, the Ugandan dictator Yoweri Museveni and his NRM government are trying to strike fear into demonstrators and protesters in order to get them to distance themselves from opposition leaders. This is just another example of Museveni using a fringe group of criminals to blame for any acts of violence or bloodshed. It's the same tactic he's used for over 20 years with the Lord's Resistance Army and its leader Joseph Kony in the northern part of Uganda. It's a way for him to divert attention from his own transgressions and atrocities. Do you think this could also be a move to make government surveillance look like a benevolent gesture to the opposition, as well as an act of further collaboration in the U.S. war on terror? Well, Museveni is a key ally in Africa in the so-called war on terror. By using the threat of al-Shabaab to attack Ugandan citizens, Uganda will get the necessary assistance from the U.S. government. That includes money and military. I wouldn't even be surprised if U.S. officials came up with this idea to further justify the U.S. presence in Uganda and in other parts of Africa. And why does Museveni himself seem like a more logical target for al-Shabaab than Ugandan opposition leaders? Well, al-Shabaab took responsibility for the July 2010 bombings in Kampala during the World Cup final that killed 74 and injured 70 people, including Americans. Al-Shabaab is a Somalia-based organization that is very angry with the Ugandan government for having thousands of its troops in Somalia. The United States is fighting a proxy war in Somalia, and they're using troops from Uganda and Burundi. Al-Shabaab is a threat to the NRM government, not to the Ugandan opposition leaders. Michael Kirkpatrick, thank you for speaking to KPFA. Thank you, Anne. I'd also like to thank everyone who supported KPFA in this fun drive you just finished. There are only a few media outlets covering stories like this. It's important for Americans to know how their taxpayer money is being used by our government in places like Uganda to support dictators like Yawari Museveni. If you like what you're hearing, it's still possible to support KPFA online and anytime at kpfa.org. For Pacifica, KPFA and Afrobeat Radio, I'm Ann Garrison.